You're listening to the Simplifiers Podcast, where we take topics in business and in life and simplify them. Award-winning event producer and educator, Mary Baird Wilcock, CSCP, will help you break it all down, figure it out, and spark you to do the thing. It's time to simplify. Here's your host, mentor, and undercover superhero, Mary Baird Wilcock. Hello, and welcome back to the Simplifiers Podcast. Look at you shine. You found the secret to a better life. When we simplify, we thrive in every single way. And on Fridays, we release a short bonus episode highlighting a super thought of the day. These mini episodes will help you spark new ideas, new ways of thinking, or simply challenge some old beliefs that you might have. And today, I want to simplify how to overcome your fear of public speaking, assuming you have one. No shame. Most people feel nervous, no matter if they're faced with the daunting task of speaking up in the boardroom or getting on stage in front of 300 people. There is no difference. Public speaking can be especially scary if you've been voluntold to do it or, you know, the old classic one. Oh, could you just say a few words <laughs> and you've not prepared anything at all? I mean, who enjoys that? Very few people. Earlier this week, I spoke with Koya Webb all about how to overcome obstacles in your life and learn how to face your fears. And one thing I started to realize when we were chatting was how much power we, okay, so let's be real, I was giving to the things that I was most afraid of doing in my life. Believe it or not, I was a very, very shy child growing up. Eight-year-old me was afraid to talk to people, dreaded using the phone, preferred to play alone, in the closet, by myself, all alone. And I wouldn't have in a million, zillion years believed you if you had said, hey, little Mary, one day you're going to grow up and be an international public speaker, a coach, and a podcaster who confidently shares her ideas and inspires thousands of people every single week. No way, Jose. (laughs) No chance. But over time, that's who I've become. Do you want to hear my secret? In my mind, to be an excellent public speaker, you need to practice, I mean, with a whole lot of repetition, these three core things, cultivating your courage, giving yourself grace, and owning your voice. So let's simplify that. Step one, cultivating your courage. Doing big, scary things in life means you have to put on your big girl britches and take a bold step forward even when it's scary. I mean, especially when it's scary. Even when you're not sure where the path is going to take you next, you feel this internal nudge, this little whisper that says, go on, go for it. Apply to speak at your industry conference. Pitch that big prospective client. Visualize yourself taking the TEDx stage and delivering your one big idea to the world. All of these things require boldness, not cockiness, because I mean, really, who likes to learn from someone who's cocky? But courage is the key trait that you want to cultivate. And with courage comes confidence. You come to the table with well-crafted thoughts and ideas, and you believe in your ability to communicate them effectively. Just like a kid learning to ride a bike for the first time. To gain more confidence as a public speaker, you must get out of your comfort zone Raise your hand in the boardroom, step up onto that stage, practice your craft over and over and over again, make a ton of mistakes, and then learn from them quickly. Then do it all over again. I mean, truly, again and again. Each time, it'll get easier and easier. Each time, you'll learn more about yourself and how an audience responds to your style of communicating, what jokes land, and what turn of phrases draw blank stares. With repetition, you squash the fear of, yikes, I'm doing something new, and replace it with quiet courage that is growing in strength from within. So here's a tip. In order to cultivate your courage, I want you to do a quick Google search for call for speakers and add in your area of expertise. So let's say you're an expert on sales. Google call for speakers sales and see what conferences are currently looking to book people just like you to come and speak. Build a list of 10 conferences that look like a match and then set a seven-minute timer to brainstorm out various topics that you know backwards and forwards. I mean, maybe it's a big challenge that people are facing right now in your industry and you know that you've got an innovative way to solve it. 
write it down, and begin to create your target list of which conferences and events you're going to pitch yourself for in the coming year ahead. See? This is you taking simple action towards making things happen and building your courage. Look at you do the thing. Step two, giving yourself grace. We think that people who are professional public speakers must never, ever get nervous. I mean, they've got superhuman abilities to memorize their lines. They must have loads of resources at their disposal and were easily voted most popular in high school to be where they are now. Friends, I am here to tell you that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, the people you admire on stage are all just people. I mean, just regular old people, even Oprah, even Brene, or Liz Gilbert, or Marie Forleo, or Danielle Laporte, or even me. We brush our teeth, we wear yoga pants when we lounge at home, and let's be real, sometimes when we go grocery shopping, we get nervous before we take the stage. No matter how big or small the room is, no matter if we've done it a hundred times before, it happens to all of us. So if you're feeling like, oh, I could never do that, just pause on that thought for a second and realize that if you gave yourself a little bit of grace right now, you'll know you can do this. You will. You are. Each time you communicate with another person, you're building up your ability to be a public speaker. Each time you learn how to listen deeper, not just waiting to talk, you'll become a more powerful storyteller. Each time you speak up in a team meeting, confidently sharing your ideas, listening with true empathy and inspiring the team to rally around you, you are gracefully growing as a dynamic leader who people want and need to hear from. So here's a tip. If you're unsure how to take the leap and put yourself out there as a public speaker, I want you to consider joining your local chapter of Toastmasters International. Here you'll find others looking to boost their public speaking skills and a safe space to practice giving speeches and building that repetition. With practice comes courage and later confidence. With a little bit of grace, you'll get there too. Step three, owning your voice. When you're just starting out and trying a new skill, whether it's scuba diving or public speaking, the tendency is to replicate the expert you admire the most. You pick up on their style, their vocal rhythm, their subtle nuances, and you attempt to parrot it back, which is all fine and dandy when you're just getting your feet under you. Match them, wobble around a bit, try, try, try again. But as soon as you're up and running, I want to really encourage you to find your own voice along the way. You are a unique expression of the divine. Remember, there's never been someone quite like you in the entire existence of humankind, and there never will be in the future. So what makes you, you? That's your special sauce and your essence. So don't let anyone water it down or get pressured into fitting into a certain box. Owning your voice means knowing what you believe in, knowing what big idea you want to share with the world, and confidently doing it in a way that feels aligned with the true you, deep, deep, deep down inside. The quirky, funny, deep, imperfect, yet still loving you that resonates at an incredibly high vibration. The you that needs to be heard and wants to break free. So here's a tip. Set another seven-minute timer and journal out your thoughts to the following statements. Complete these sentences. My friends describe me as, in my line of work, I'm known for, if I had no limits to my success, I would totally create this next. Remember, owning your voice starts first with building awareness of who you are, what you believe in, and how you want to make a positive impact on the world. And then take daily imperfect action over and over and over again to make it happen. And just one final whisper just from me to you, dear friend, coming closer. Okay, here's a few rapid fire quick tips to remember the next time you're about to take the stage to deliver a talk. This is what's working for me these days. Here goes. Wear clothes that make you feel like a million dollars. Nothing too clingy, nothing too tight. If you're pulling and tugging at it constantly, or if it's too tight around the armpits and you're totally sweating, it is not the outfit for you. You want to step up into the spotlight, feeling confident and those dang, I look good vibes emanating from you. That's what makes you radiant and captivating to others. 
Also, drink lots of water. Skip the coffee one hour beforehand. You don't need caffeine mixing with your inevitable adrenaline rush during sound check. Instead, you just need to stay hydrated. And hey, if you love coffee, reward yourself with a cup immediately after your talk. Next, don't rely on your slides to carry you. No one enjoys a text-heavy slide presentation where the speaker just reads it word for word. Instead, make your slide deck image-heavy and use that as a visual cue for you to move on to the next learning point you want to share. And that brings me to this. I encourage you to think in bullet points and communicate through stories. Ask the audience questions and make things interactive whenever possible. This will help you get your point across in a human way and less mechanical, less robotic. And remember, Amy Cuddy's power poses are magic. If you've not seen her TED Talk, click the link in our show notes and check this out. Before you're about to go on stage, change up your physical stance. Shoulders back, hands on hips. It's time to stand tall like a superhero. This two-minute exercise changes something in your brain to instantly help you feel more confident, more calm, and ready to do the thing. Also, create a master plan for your talk, kind of like a roadmap. Write it down. What is the core outline of what you want to communicate today? What does success look like for you? But what about the audience member? As in, what do they hope to learn and get out of seeing your talk? Map your talk out, big picture, from start to finish, ensuring that you're covering the major talking points and learning objectives that you want to get across. Rehearse, review, and let it seep into your every fiber. And then when you go to deliver the talk and you forget something or you stumble and you muck something up, remember to give yourself grace. It's in the stumbles where we truly learn, grow, and master the art of public speaking over time. You can do this. I believe in you. It's time to simplify. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to get more of this awesome goodness coming to you automatically on Tuesdays and Fridays. And thank you so much for tuning in. Big thanks to our undercover superheroes at the Simplifiers podcast that help us create these episodes for you each and every week. They deserve a giant hug for me and the rest of the world. Susan Marie, our podcast editor, Jeffrey Lynn, our video editor, Leiden and Janine Yardley, our show notes editors, and Manminder Athwal is our blogger. Our advisory board includes Aubrey Nowitzki, Chris Justice, and George Mills. And I'm your host, Mary Baird Wilcock. Thank you so much for listening and telling your peeps about us. As always, friends, keep things simple. Thanks for listening to the Simplifiers podcast. Find the show notes for this episode and all others at thesimplifierspodcast.com. Know someone in your life who needs to simplify? Be a hero and share our podcast with them. And we will see you here next time. As always, keep it simple.